please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. PCS as well. Okay, so the first rate is eight points in the green for the PCS as well. Okay, so the first rate is eight points in the green for the Nifty, but that's quickly slipping. Uh, the Nifty is almost in the red now. In the red now, 10,814, 10,813 is what we have. Uh, so let's see if we go towards that zone which the SGX Nifty was indicating. Uh, this would still qualify as a decent start. Uh, eight points down on the Nifty, 14 points down on the Bank Nifty. As expected, it's the oil marketing companies which are the top gainers. So HPCL is up 3%, BPCL up 2.5%, IOC up 2%. When we traded on Friday, crude was at 76 half for 77. Crude's at 73 now, so that's a seminal drop that you've seen. Uh, Tech Mahindra, the stock that we pointed out in the morning, up 1%. ICICI Bank up about half a percent. Uh, HDFC Bank is sort of holding the bank nifty along with ICICI Bank. Of course, Dr. Reddy's is down 2%, so that's on the way down, reacting to that uh, uh, setback uh, the series of Subaxon. Now, but that was at risk launch and the street knew it. Uh, Vedanta is down about 2%, Hindalco is down about 1.5%, Kotak is down a bit. So a bit of a global commodity place playing out, Tata Steel down 1%. Cement's been making new lows, so Ultratech Cement down about two-thirds of 1%, and ONGC is down about half a percent. Uh, all things told, uh, this is still a decent opening considering the kind of overall cues that we had, and the Nifty now with just about five points loss, and really it's the oil marketing companies uh, which are standing out right now. Sorry. Well, yes, uh, in fact, you know, in the mid-cap index, it's absolutely flat. Uh, the market breadth is uh, split evenly, just a tad bit in favor of the declines. But it is the entire aviation space that's perking up now because of the fall in crude prices. So Jet Airways is up 2%, Interglobe is up about 2 odd percent, and so is Spice Jet. The last time I saw up about 2, 3 odd percent. Idea is also in the green. Uh, as I said earlier, the idea of Vodafone merger is likely to be approved by the Department of Telecom as early as this week. So about 2.5% higher on that stock. By the way, uh, TCS has hit a new high today, so just keep an eye out on that. Uh, continues to be a uh, market leader as the IT stocks. Apart from that, a couple of more names uh, on the upside. You have a TVS Motor that once again has popped back on the traders charts, so up about 2 odd percent for TVS Motor. Castrol is uh, making an attempt to recover. Mother Sumi is also in the green right now. And a couple of other stocks like DCM, Sriram, etc. are not doing too badly this morning. Let's take a quick look at what's on the downside. Your usual suspects, you know, Vakrangis of the world, Ruchi Soya is down about 5 odd percent. Um, Dr. Reddy's, by the way, is falling some more now, so down about 1.5 odd percent. Dish TV is also coming in for some profit taking. And a couple of these metal names because of the fall globally as well. JSPL, Tata Steel, Sale, all in the red right now, down about half odd percent or so. so um, well, I was looking at uh, some more names on the downside. Uh, you've got selling continuing on an Avenue Supermart. EVR is slightly on the lower side as well. So these are some of the stocks down. On the Nifty, there seems to be a bit of a fight back in the works. And uh, that's thanks to some buying that's returning on, let's say, an SBI, which is up about half a percent. Indebel's housing finance was an interesting stock. Promoters have sold shares worth 1,000 crore rupees. So we are trying to reach out to them. Uh, right now, that stock has recovered from the first cut, which was negative, and it's back in positive territory. So Anuj, very, very flat to start mm. things off uh, as of now. Yeah, uh, you know, what's interesting is that the mid-caps opened lower but are now recovering. Uh, on the Nifty and the bank, the, the bank Nifty is slightly weak. Uh, uh, you know, that was always unexpected lines, but the Nifty's got some legs for it. Uh, Tata Motors for the for, for time being is now making highs of the morning and a couple of other auto names also doing well. So let's see how things move from here. Uh, uh, Sudarshan, thoughts on market opening and is there an interesting trade? Yes, uh, the markets have opened much better than we thought. I have been wanting to buy on a dip. I don't know whether that dip will come. So in another five or 10 minutes, I would be buying the Nifty for a day trade. And if it works out, to carry it also. So be long in the Nifty, just give it another five minutes of cooling. There are two stocks that are coming out well. One is ICICI Bank. It could surprise us on the upside today. So consider buying it. And the second is Adani Ports, again for buying. Uh, this market is not for shorting. Okay, so we have some new uh, additions to the all-time high list now. Jubilant Foodworks once again has made a new high. Bharat Financial Inclusion has also hit a new high this morning. And from the front line, as it's really TCS that uh, takes your breath away, fresh high on that one, 1850 on that stock. Uh, Udyan, I remember when we were chatting about TCS hitting that $100 billion market cap, you had said that it, it deserves this and more. Since then, the stock has gone up about 30%. I, I think that was in the month of April. Um, you you get a sense that it's that the story has played out or is there a lot more to go 
I think long-term investors need not worry about uh, temporary overvaluation in companies like TCS. I think the real good money or big money in TCS has been made by investors who've held, held it over a long period of time, 10, 15 years. It is that kind of stock. I mean, in, in our excitement of talking about selling every time the stock moves from 18 to 20 PE, I think the bigger story is missed out. This is a class act. Sure, it goes through periods as it did go through over the last two, three years. I mean, starting 12 months back, uh, a period of compression, and that happens with every cycle in every sector. I, I think long-term investors should just hold on. This is a pure class play, uh, excellent management, a complete dedication to give back free cash flow to shareholders, and that is their stated policy. But not to confuse TCS with every other technology company. I think as the results come in uh, for the IT sector, you will probably find that they are as different as chalk and cheese. You'll still find companies like Wipro, et cetera, languishing, HCL Tech in a spot of bother, Infosys flattish, but maybe TCS, NIT Tech, and uh, some of these names actually performing better. So it's not a sector call, uh, but uh, some of these IT names probably have some more or a lot more momentum going for them, particularly in a scenario where people want to own exporters. Okay, uh, let's just uh, go back to our technical experts for um, some more thoughts on what's happened so far. So the story is that there is a recovery and there are some legs to this. Uh, you have the likes of an ICICI bank and a state bank fighting. HDFC twins are still sulking. But other names, Lever, LNT. So there are some sort of heavy hitters for the Nifty this morning, which is why we're back in positive territory. Mitesh, your thoughts? You've been hesitant. I mean, last week's uh, long trades were getting stopped out. Looking at this buying that's coming in, uh, any fresh trades on the index? Anything else that comes to mind? Yeah, so I think on the index, yes, I think, you know, but individual stock side, you had pharma, which was an excellent performing sector. I think uh, over there, we are uh, observing some very good follow through happening on Apollo ties. It's met the first uh, Apollo hospital, sorry. Uh, it's met the first target of 1060. I think I'm looking at 1120 next. So that still could be bought in a mild intraday dip. Uh, that apart, I think a couple of uh, buys on PEL, I think we have Piramal Enterprises, which has broken out nicely and is seeing follow through. And a sell on HTFC Bank or Titan, I think where both the intraday charts are now showing some negative traction. Okay, by the way, just keep an eye on tire stocks as well. MRF is now hitting highs of the morning, and that also is a space which is uh, being positively impacted by this uh, drop in crude prices. Uh, Prakash, your thoughts on market opening and any stock idea? Market still needs to have some kind of a direction. So far, it's at a place where it can make or break level. In fact, I would say that unless it stays above, we must assume the market is a bit sideways move with a slightly bearish bias. Bank Nifty is looking weak to me, and I think it can see a slide to maybe around 26,275, 26,300 zones. I like perhaps these two stocks here. Kestrel looks good to me. We can see an up move here, and so is the case of Maruti Suzuki. I think it can climb up higher from here. All right. Uh, uh, Prakash, Mitesh, uh, Sudarshan, thanks a lot for taking us through the, the market opening. We'll, of course, uh, keep coming back to you. But, uh, but then let's uh, take some final thoughts from you as well. Uh, that, you know, uh, uh, the one space which has sort of lost its mojo a bit is, uh, you know, stocks like Maruti and TVS Motor, which all through last year were making new highs. Uh, and while, you know, some of the other auto stocks have done well, for example, Mahindra and Mahindra, uh, your thoughts on, uh, you know, Maruti and TVS in particular? You know, another way I would position myself in some of these auto names is to say that now it's time to focus on maybe two-wheelers and tractors. Uh, two-wheelers have already shown enough traction over the last couple of months to suggest that they have turned the corner. Auto ancillaries linked to two-wheeler plays might also be an interesting space to look at. M&M has broken out a few months back after a long consolidation pattern, multi-year consolidation, and I think it will probably climb higher. So, you know, some of these tractor and two-wheeler plays look more attractive given their relative valuations as well. Maruti is a TCS like evergreen. I mean, uh, I don't think long-term investors want to get out of such a quality play. But given where valuations are, the relative performance might be better in some of these other pockets of, um, of autos. Uh, and I think that I, is pretty much the kind of portfolio allocation that uh, I think would work for the second half of 2018 is to focus on, say, some of these select autos, select consumers, IT and pharma in the export basket, and maybe a few select private banks. I would not actually want to own too much else, particularly in sectors like maybe metals, telecom, NBFCs, uh, PSUs, infrastructure. I think those are names, and anything high beta, those are names which will underperform now in an interest rate, a rising interest rate scenario. You want to be in quality and maybe in a handful of the sectors for at least the next six or nine months. 
Okay, by the way, uh, HPCL is surging now up more than 3 odd percent and so is the mid-cap index up about 3 tenths of a percent. Uh, Udin, before we left, let you go, uh, you know, one big risk for this market about two months ago was the way crude was surging. Some amount of that fear has now dissipated with crude back below $73 a barrel. You think because of some of these reasons, the Indian markets could avoid a major correction through the rest of the year? Well, India has outperformed relatively uh, some of the other emerging markets. But the point, Sonia, is that emerging markets generally face a very big uphill challenge over the next six months or so. But because liquidity is contracting globally, uh, you, you've heard the Fed out, two more rate hikes are coming this year, the ECB is stopping its buying program. In this kind of a scenario, emerging markets will generally struggle. If crude continues to fall, India will be partly insulated and in a sentiment term, in a sentiment space, it will do better than other EMs. But the problem is India is running a current account deficit and running a current account deficit at a time when financing it is difficult because of shrinking global liquidity is always going to be a problem for the rupee and by translation for the stock market. So marginal relative outperformance, yes, but overall the wicket remains sticky for all EMs, including India, for the next six months or so. All right, uh, Odin, uh, pleasure talking to you. Thanks a lot uh, for joining us. And of course, uh, we'll keep talking as the World Cup also keeps progressing. Uh, uh, before I invite the market master for the day, let me just pull out the intraday chart of uh, two stocks to tell you, what, you know, the kind of market we are in, Sun Pharma and also Ajanta Pharma. Sun Pharma had a bit of a decline today in the morning, but that's been bought and how. Just look at that stock, uh, now making highs of the morning, and Ajanta Pharma as well, the one that's been uh, seeing some buying of late. So uh, even Dr. Reddy's has actually cut its losses. Uh, let's uh, then invite our market master, S. Krishna Kumar, CIO of Equity, Sundra Mutual Fund, now joins us. Uh, Krishna, good morning. Uh, you know, you have, of course, uh, been uh, known as someone who's created a lot of wealth in mid-caps. How are you looking at this phase uh, of uh, underperformance of mid-caps and small caps in particular over the last three to six months? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> clearly, you know, the, uh, the euphoric uh, wave that swept up all the small caps and uh, some of the smaller mid caps uh, to kind of all time highs and uh, significant uh, overvaluations is giving way uh, as you hit, uh, you know, some of the weaker macros and uh, some amount of liquidity uh, drying from uh, overseas. Uh, so, clearly, in the last, uh, you know, six months, uh, we have seen a, a clear divergence, you know, the large cap caps outperforming uh, small caps by about more than 20 percent to 25 percent uh, uh, across a different uh, comparison comparative uh, bun bunch of stocks but clearly you know the valuation uh, premium that the small caps enjoyed over the nifty etc has shrunk and it's basically the bsc small cap index on a one year forward is now at a discount to the nifty or the sensex so clearly to a large extent, I think this uh, uh, excessive uh, valuations have drained out. Uh, and if you look at, uh, you know, the small and mid caps have a good uh, earnings trajectory going ahead. The micros, the corporate fundamentals uh, have been improving. So I think from here on, you would find that uh, the uh, the financials, the growth, earnings growth in these companies would be uh, the ones to watch out for and which will be supportive of the returns that the small cap segment would deliver. So we remain quite constructive here at this point in time. I think uh, a lot of money is made when there is uh, uh, fear and I think clearly in the small cap space uh, now uh, that's very true. Okay, yes, uh, as they say, buy when the street is fearful. Um, uh, Krishna, hi, good morning and thanks for joining us. You know, you've really made a lot of, created a lot of wealth for investors in several of your funds, whether it is with names, uh, you know, like Hitachi Homes, Arvind, uh, Exide, Mahindra CIE, etc. These have been huge wealth creators in the past. But um, going ahead, would you continue to stick with some of these themes like auto ancillary, cement, etc.? Or do you think that new leadership will merge now even within the mid cap and small cap space see I think uh, you know um I wouldn't think that there is going to be a, a leadership that's going to emerge 
uh, it, in terms of uh, some sector at this point in time. Uh, given the kind of growth that is more uh, diversified uh, across uh, various sectors, given that the economy is doing well on, uh, on all fronts, uh, I would uh, rather you know, uh, stick with a lot more diversified kind of a portfolio approach. Uh, you know, though you will definitely find that uh, uh, you know consumption is definitely an overarching theme across various portfolios that we run, which will span across auto, auto components, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle products, retail, apparels, brands, and uh, entertainment brands, and uh, entertainment and uh, holidaying. So you know that's a pretty broad uh, subsect that we think we will play with, and retail credit also fits into that overall you know uh, uh, optimistic. Uh, area that we play in so I think uh, uh, it's 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 largely a diversified portfolio approach uh, because uh, even the infra sectors have been coming back you know cement or uh, you know uh, if you look at the APC construction companies they've been doing very well one of the best order books that you have seen uh, with them the book to build ratio is quite healthy so overall I think it's going to be more uh, a diversified approach uh, you may say that probably the industrials and capital goods uh, will probably come back into limelight over the next 12 months because uh, that's a sector which is not done well, but uh, we believe that uh, there are initial green shoots that are there in terms of uh, orders uh, coming into as, as the private sector starts to investing in for growth at this point in time. Okay, um, Krishna, morning. How are you looking at tier two IT specifically for your mid cap fund? I mean, the big boys have had this absolute dream innings, uh, even the mid-cap companies actually. What would the call be as we look at the next 12 months? I think, uh, you know, IT relatively has uh, played out well, you know, given the kind of support they had from uh, strong free cash flows and valuations. I think uh, that was probably the entry uh, argument. And then with the improved uh, uh, growth outlook and uh, weakening rupee, I, I think a lot of the trade has played out. Uh, henceforth, I think, you know, uh, we would look at IT as more, uh, you know, uh, a neutral to the market uh, in the mid-cap space than uh, being a big, uh, you know, driver of alpha in the next 12 months. So we'd be very selective there. Okay, by the way, the consumption story continues. So today also we have Dabur, Colgate uh, making new highs. Uh, uh, not just this, Krishna, the, you know, uh, the jubilance of the world's been making new highs. Uh, Bajaj Finance been making new highs. The, the point I'm trying to make here is that the quality stocks uh, are getting more and more expensive. So as, a, as an investor, as a fund manager, uh, what should one do in a market like this where there's a select you know set of 20 or 30 stocks making new highs and making a bit of a mockery of near term valuations yeah uh, i think uh, like we discussed uh, last time around uh, you know whether be it uh, uh, mid caps or small caps or larger companies uh, clearly you know during uh, these kind of times when there is uncertainty uh, from uh, macros and from global liquidity uh, that we are uh, seeing, uh, I think th there would be a move towards being a lot more defensive. And, uh, you know, uh, defen getting defensive across sectors would mean uh, probably, you know, even in an industrial com industrial sector or infra, I think going to, you know, companies with better balance sheets, better promoters, and, uh, uh, and companies which have some kind of competitive edge in the markets. So I think that's where I think the markets are moving to. Uh, I think, you know, there is a premium for, uh, you know, uh, uh, having low beta in this market conditions when volatility is uh, really increased in the last six months. So I think that's the trade. And uh, if you look at uh, the portfolio that you mentioned, uh, you know, in terms of names that you talked about, um, many of our portfolios are hinged on, uh, you know, uh, portfolio companies which have uh, strong balance sheets, good promoters, some kind of a strong business moat, which keeps these companies uh, fairly insulated during tough times and uh, enable these companies to still uh, outgrow the market and maintain profitability. So I think that's why if you do look at uh, some of funds like a mid-cap fund, the fund has outperformed the benchmark by about more than 3% in the current calendar year. Uh, that is reflective of the quality of the portfolio. And I think that's how I think the next one year would shape up uh, when there are pressures uh, on different fronts that we see. 
Okay, in fact, one of the stocks in your mid-cap fund is uh, Heidelberg Cement. So what we've done is we've invited the management uh, to speak to us about all the issues that you just discussed, how, you know, cement prices are shaping up, demand isn't picking up on the ground, etc. Jamshed Nawal Cooper joins in. Uh, Krishna, thank you so much for joining us as well. Uh, Jamshed, good morning. You know, we were just talking to Krishna Kumar about how the cement uh, demand will continue to rise going ahead. I was looking at your own internals, uh, the sales volumes in the March quarter water grew about five odd percent your revenues were up almost about 16 odd percent tell us what are the trends looking like in terms of volumes revenues over the next few quarters uh, when it comes to Heidelberg which operates mostly in central India market uh, the trend is I suppose you know it's uh, quite good I would say uh, the demand has been very good uh, uh, unlike uh, south where there is a little depression but I think that is a very short term depression which will come east has been good I think in central India the market has been growing where which we operate almost 90 percent of our capacity uh, the demand uh, factors which are you know housing project which are going on the government housing project the road infrastructure projects are going on in a big way uh, and uh, to top it, uh, there is a shortage of material because of railway movement restrictions and truck availability also. So I say the price uh, on the price front also, it seems to be a strong market right now. So can you elaborate on that, Mr. Cooper? Um, have you undertaken any recent price hikes? Uh, we are also in the monsoon season, so it's not you know the best seasonal patch. But once we get through the trough, I mean, will price hikes be the order this year? Uh, see the price uh, price hikes are very much dependent not on monsoon it is most available dependent on the demand what we get from the market uh, as of now I think today also we are taken small increases here and there in central India uh, and we continue to take increases today the prices in central India are I think uh, uh, quite robust uh, and uh, despite the initial showers uh, it has not seemed to be you know tipping or any way uh, going forward, I think uh, if the demand is going to remain the way it is, uh, I think uh, the prices will remain very solid at the moment. Can you just give us a number? So you, say, you said you've taken small price hikes here and there. Maybe a rough number range. I mean, was it less than 5% or more than 5%? Uh, See, it's a close to I know, around 5% of price increases have happened this month alone, you know. Mm -hmm. If I would say uh, uh, the prices which were in Lucknow, which were at about 350 odd, now they are crossing somewhere close to 360, 370, 380. Uh, these are the price lines, uh, Central India, Bhopal and other markets, if you look at them, they are quite stable at 300 plus uh, category of prices, which uh, gives us a good... Uh, uh, feeling of the market that the market is not really sagging or anywhere. Okay, so with prices going up, uh, the you know demand picking up, what kind of EBITDA per ton you could do reasonably in FY19? I mean, in FY18, you close with about little less than 800 rupees per ton. Uh, what would the average be for FY19? You think? Uh, we, I, I won't like to give you any guidance on this, but uh, yes, as I said always that uh, we try to improve our EBITDA per ton year after year with every quarter we try to do that and this is the endeavor of the management which will continue to do that. Okay, um, but you know, can you t tell us a little bit because of course, the Q4 was uh, I guess, you know, very high at about 940 rupees per ton. That's not sustainable, is it? Uh, see, again, you know, the pressures on fuel prices, pressures are there. Uh, had it been the fuel prices would have remained uh, lower, uh, yes, you could uh, continue to grow from there onwards. Uh, but notwithstanding even the fuel pressures, uh, I would say uh, astute management by on consumption factors uh, of the man by the management, I think it uh, gives us a little better edge uh, in the market. We are a cost-driven company and uh, we believe that you know cost should be the lowest possible in the industry and we work towards that. So if we can manage our costs going forward, I think uh, we will uh, uh, continue to do the way we have been performing so far. Okay, Mr. Cooper, so pricing is looking good. Uh, you, are, you seem to be confident in obviously sort of you know, managing uh, the costs, so uh, operationally it should be an okay year for you. On the headline number, now in the previous year, you did, I think, about 4% yes. uh, sales volume. How will this year look like and what is the capacity utilization you are working mm -hmm. at? I mean, is there at all a need to even think about adding capacity? 
Yes, this is a very important question for Heidelberg cement as it is concerned. Uh, yes, uh, we are operating close to 82%, 83%, sometimes even we touch 90%, close to 85, 87 also in some of the months. And that's, uh, but still I would say uh, going forward, uh, we have still some tweaking can be done in the plants. We can uh, reach about capacity utilization at the uh, nameplate capacity. We can add another 10 to 15% by a little bit of tweaking in the system so even if we are growing at about seven percent year every year we have got at least three years uh, headroom to keep growing with the existing uh, capacity without not much changing much on this okay uh, just one last question from our end then on the balance sheet uh, just to give us an update on what the debt stands at currently and uh, have you made any kind of repayments last year Yeah, it is around 475 crores uh, okay. and uh, we have made last year some payments and in the going forward also we have about 150 crores to be made in the next year. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Cooper, thanks for joining us and uh, for giving us these updates on the business. The industry is picking up, he says. Demand trends have improved, especially in central India, and they have taken about a 5% price increase as well. Look at that. The stock is reacting positively to that news flow. Here's a quick programming reminder, though. Our special series, Hunting for Value, will be back in a bit. It'll focus on a pharma stock, which has lost 25% from its 52-week high, is seeing competition in key drugs like Lealda and Tamiflu, but there could be growth ahead in biosimilars and vaccines. Is it a value pick or is it a bear trap? Tune in at 9.50 a.m. this morning.